So sleep casting, the process disc description essentially you have mode quite often porous mode you pour the slurry your suspension into it and over time the by suction action you apply vacuum or just by itself the capillary suction the moisture goes away and then you have so-called the cast green cast the powder compact okay Slurry is poured into porous mode, uh, which sucks solvent away by capillary force. Of course, you can apply vacuum, it's more expensive, but if you have to do it, you do it. Generally, slip casting mechanism, uh, this so called law, of course, we are not so much into it. The solvent flux, we define the flux J as K over uh, this uh, eta and the dp over dx. And the K is permeability of the porous medium, your, your mode, porous mode, as well as your already deposited or consolidated layer. You see what I mean? This part, the already kind of like uh, partially sedimented portion will not be very dense. It still allows the solvent to go away. Permeability of this cast as well as the mold and then this eta for solvent viscosity and the dp over dx are pressure gradient between inside and outside of course the higher the permeability the higher the solvent flux the higher the so-called pressure gradient how fast does the pressure decrease from one side to the other side? The higher the solvent removal rate. The higher the viscosity, higher eta, the lower the solvent removal rate. Common sense, right? Kind of, okay, makes sense. Then slip casting. The thickness of your cast, of your solidified, kind of solidified layer increase with time following like a diffusion parabolic relationship. L, your thickness for your cast, the square term equals a constant times T. Or this one, if we use diffusion as a analogy, like square root of constant times T. And this constant, we have still a number of so called parameters. We have still the permeability of the already consa consolidated cast. Right? We are doing casting, and uh, the part that nears the wall first become packed higher density, and that become a barrier layer for your continued solvent motion. So the permeability of that consolidated layer is also important in this case. Okay. P, pressure difference across the cast body. And strictly speaking, I probably should use data P. The pressure difference between the cast body. Inside, still liquid versus outside. And the viscosity. Okay and the volume fraction of the solid in the cast vc volume fraction of solid in the cast body and uh, volume fraction of solid in the slurry this ratio okay so it just uh, gives you an idea of how fast would my cast thickness increase over time it gives you an idea roughly how fast it is going to be an implication would be the thickness growth rate would uh, decrease with time how do you know it decrease you can do differential or you can say okay this is following kind of parabolic diffusion like a diffusion the longer the time the slower your diffusion appears to be Okay, and optimize pore size is a 
you need the optimal pore size for compromise between pressure difference and the permeability. If your pore size is too large, your permeability would be what? If the pore size is too large, which means you allow the liquid to go through, your permeability would be high, which helps. But at the same time, if the pore size is too high, you cannot maintain a big enough pressure difference. Make sense? Remember, P is a pressure difference. If the pore size is very large, you don't have a pressure difference. Extreme case, the same. It's open, completely open. You have no pressure difference. Make sense? So that's why we said, okay, optimal pore size, not too large, not too small. If it's too small, no liquid can go through, extreme case. Right? Permeability drops, suffers. And slurry should be so-called partially stabilized. We said uh, if it's too stable, the slurry is too stable, it's going to give us a so-called too dense cast. Too dense cast which gives too low permeability, which prevents further drying or removal of the solvent. Make sense? Which means it, that's not what you want. On the other hand, you do not want your slurry to be completely unstable. Otherwise, it packed too loosely. Everything loosely flocculated, and then it gives you too loose a cast green body. Make sense? So it's compromised. You see, again, it's compromised, compromised, compromised. Intermediate condition, not too extreme. Okay? We said earlier you can try to stabilize your slurry or suspension by adding electrolyte, by adding polymer, but here we say you do not want your suspension to be too stable. Otherwise, when they pack, they give you too dense a green body for the already consolidated part, which prevents the moisture to go or your solvent to go away and then makes your drying process, casting process too slow. Okay. Increasing solid content or decreasing viscosity leads to increase the thickness growth rate. Decreasing thickness, you just imagine this as your diffusion coefficient. Decreasing this guy viscosity, which makes my diffusion coefficient goes higher and see if makes my cast grows faster as if make my diffusion goes faster. Make sense? That's kind of the similar analogy, a parabolic relationship. Okay? So 